Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. My name is Lynn Marquardt, and I'm your host. Today's date, believe it or not, is August 1st, 2014. I cannot believe it's August, and I know I say that every month. So welcome, everyone. I hope you've had a good week. I know I have. It's been a busy week, but I'm really looking forward to spending an hour with you quilting or working on whatever fiber projects any of us bring to the table. Remember, this is a virtual sewing bee. I'm here working in the Simply Colorful studio, working on my various quilting projects, and I love to share that with you, and I love when you share what you're working on with me. And I know I've, I've actually already seen folks who have said they're coming, so hello to Karen, to Sandra, to Linda, to Anne, to Jean, to Kelsey, to Joyce, to Judy. Did I say Karen? There are a couple of Karens out there. Peggy and Lucille and Drew and Tim and Bob and thank you for joining. So let's get right into it. Today we're going to do another Dear Jane block. For any of you who may or may not be familiar, Dear Jane of course is the infamous quilt that was made in the 1863 by Jane Stickle up in Vermont and there's quite a movement of Dear Janiacs who are making each and every square just like Jane did. And each square has a letter and a number. And today I'm going to be doing B6, the wild goose chase. So why don't we just jump right into it. I'm going to do paper piecing. And that's my plan for the night. Not a big, um, big quilt, quilt block, but a fun one nonetheless. And I printed out the foundation. Oh, Sue, Sue Norton, welcome if you're joining. And to answer your question, can you do Dear Jane with just the book? Sure, sure. This is the book, and she has, or actually, it's Brenda Mongey's Papadakis. She's created this book, and she has every single Dear Jane pattern with a picture of the square and the pattern in real size. So you absolutely can use that. You can measure it. You can create your own templates. You could photocopy it. You could cut it up and make templates. So absolutely you can do that. And there are online sources. And we'll go over some of those a little bit later. I wanted to share those with you. And including some Facebook groups around Dear Jane that I found. But, or and in, in addition to the book, you can use the quilt design software and I do use that and I love it and what I have here is the paper foundation pieces for the block so I don't know if you can see this very well but for each unit subunit within the block I'm going to paper piece that and then I'm going to paper piece them together so I literally have two different types of scissors Although sometimes, you know, I don't know what everyone's theory is. Uh, paper's fiber. It's a type of fiber, so why would it dull your good scissors? And I'm sure I have to do more reading on that, and I'm sure there's a reason why. So anyway, I have paper scissors here. And I need my glasses. And again, what we're going to do today is just quilt along with me. Sew along with me, or just watch, decompress from the week. I love to read your comments on Google. So if you're out there and you want to say hi to your fellow quilters, I know that um, you guys talk to each other while Fibercast is going on. I think that's great. I love that because um, we're getting to know each other. You know, we know um, just, just it's a wonderful community we're building. So um, reach out to each other however you want. In addition, you can send me an email, L for my first name, Lynn, and then my last name is Mark Wedant, M-A-R-Q-U-E-D as in David, A-N-T, at gmail.com. Send me your questions, send me your email, send me a picture of what you're working on, and we will take a look. So, I have my glasses on, my trusty glasses. And I'm going to cut out each of these units. And I 
And with any luck, we'll finish one of these in an hour. Isn't that something? And I should have said I have white as a background. I'm using the same white throughout. And then I'm using greens and blues for my, um, my squares. And this one, I pulled out this old-fashioned blue. And I think I'm going to give both of them a quick little iron. Not that I need very much of it. Because these blocks only end up being, what, four and a half inches? Let's see. Let me measure it. Speaking of miniature quilts, Sarah Kokonowski, who, you know, my friend who has been here a couple of times sharing her quilting expertise, she posted a, I want to say a 13 inch block that had little dots on it, and I think each square is one inch, and the dots are even smaller, the circle appliques. Really impressive. I'll pull it up in a minute. Yes, so each square is four and a half, finishes four and a half, so it's actually going to be five inches with the seam allowance. Okay, so, oh, this is cool. And each unit is labeled, so this is G. And again, <laughs> I think we spent a lot of time last time we did this thumbing through the book. But I'm using this book as a diary, so we're going to do this one. And let's see what it has here. Okay. So there are units in the middle. G, M. Oh, boy. I think what I'll do is I'll make all the units, and then I'll figure out how to put it together. <clears throat> Although then I won't know for sure if I have everything. So there's also a lot of, for every block in Dear Jane, there are multiple methods for making it. You can use foundation piecing. You can do it by hand. You can trick the eye and actually do with applique rather than actually piecing every little piece. But right now we're going to try this paper piecing and every piece of paper has a letter on it. So P, Q, A, B, okay, where's C? C, D, okay, this is cool. So as a first start, I'm going to piece those four pieces. I don't know if you can see that. And that's going to be the middle. And the light is going to be my white and the shade is going to be my blue. So I literally I'm going to have very generous pieces of fabric. This is not the time to skimp. In my opinion, so literally Let's take it right in order. Let's do unit A. So number one on this unit is this white. So I put the white on the back, like so. And then number two. Is 
this blue. And I've put my stitch length down to 1.8. I also have a brand new spool of Aurifil. So I'm very excited. I used up a whole spool of Aurifil. Okay, so I've just sewn on the line, and with this, this small unit, literally one hair over the line on one side or the other really does make a difference. As I learned last week with the Hitty um, log cabin, miniature log cabin. Oh, and I'm using paper scissors. So I've just trimmed the back, and now I'm folding over the blue, and I'm going to iron it. This is a great project to do in a group. You know, you get, you get a group of people together, and you just commit to meeting on a Thursday night or a Friday night or whenever, and... And it's amazing. You might get one block done every time you meet, but after a year, that's 50 blocks, right? It does add up. And there's nothing like just the camaraderie of getting together, comparing blocks. I love to see the different colorways. So now I'm doing three. And don't be afraid to go over the edge of your paper. You see that? So I just sewed on the number three line. And now on the back, I need to trim it. Carol Doak would cringe. Jen, if you're out there, hi. Remember taking that Carol Doak class all those years ago? That was great. Okay, so let me trim this up. We're still not done with this unit. That's what we have so far, and we have to do one more white down at the bottom. So, here we go. If you're out there, I am loving seeing your quilts emerging. And your own designs, no less. And I was just looking at your something delight, the, the one you're doing right now that's really a log cabin with, and you've interspersed some stars. I love what you're doing with the border. You're tricking the eye, having the border go two different ways. I love that. And of course, Izzy the dog must be helping too. Okay, there's our first little teeny tiny unit. That's unit A. Okay, we're cranking. Unit B. Now we'll go the same way. And now that I have that kind of under my belt, I should be able to. Do it a little more quickly. Although, 
Shame on me if I cut these squares too small. I do not have to do that. Whoop. Did you hear that? Bob just sneezed. There's no band tonight. People are on vacation or unavailable, so... Bob is actually downstairs watching the Red Sox game. Which is probably like watching a triple A game right about now. If anyone's been following the Red Sox here in Boston, in the United States, we have our team has not been doing well that this year. And last year we won the whole thing. So they shook up the lineup and they actually traded away five people yesterday. And so they brought in some new people, of course, and some, they're bringing some people up from the farm team and rebuilding. So that's what Bob's doing. Isn't baseball such a summer sound? You just know it's summertime when you hear it. Not to mention the humidity is still pretty high up around here. Lucille, if you're on, that was a lovely walk that we took tonight. Thank you for calling me. We stopped at the garden on the way back, and our garden is producing. How are your gardens doing? You doing well? Oh, this is pretty funny. It's so hot here. It's all the lights in the studio. <laughs> they don't do that on live TV, do they? Anyway, let's see. Send me emails. Who's out there? Let's see who's out there. This always takes time the first time, but then we we get it to go really well. Sally, welcome. Jacqueline, welcome. Ah, Borders on Prairie Star from Susan. She says, started to put my borders on my quilt. Had to stop, just too tired to sew straight tonight. Boy, do I understand that. It's a Friday night, and I think you work full-time, if I remember right. Well, that's okay. Tomorrow's a new day. Sue says, I'll be watching Fibercast from my iPad. If I can't sew, it's always fun to watch others sew. Izzy says hi, too. Well, hi, Izzy, and hi, Sue, on your iPad. I do the same thing. I can't, I, I think, I haven't sewn with Bonnie in weeks, but I do watch her quilt cam every night. Oh, what a great picture. Love that. So these are the borders I was talking about. Oh, Sue, you really you do such a nice job. Keep on quilting, but rest up first. Oh, and Sue also says, okay, so here's dear Jane. Jean, Jean says, sorry to miss the fun. You're inspiring me to dig out my dear Jane this fall. Have fun, you always do. Well, good. Jean, let's do it together. Sue says, yay, more dear Jane. And I think we answered the question about the book. I do recommend the software. And she says she's thinking of that for Christmas. Perfect. And the author of this book also does classes. So look up Brenda's name. She does classes, and what I wanted to tell everyone is there are patterns that are on the web that show alternative methods. And Sarah Kokonowski actually turned us on to these, and they're very helpful. So look online. There are a lot of resources. And there are several Facebook groups of Dear Janiacs. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. I do hope your link is working too. Boy, that's frustrating when it isn't working. And I've heard that from a few people over the last couple of weeks that the Google click 
or link hasn't been working, um, keep me posted. Hopefully, Sandra, you're in. And I'm glad, yes, Fibercast withdrawals. Don't we all have them? Oh, and Sandra says, yay, I'm in. Found you tonight. Good. Welcome. Boy, have I loved watching the furry dog story out in your neck of the woods. Thank you for sharing those, those posts. I was glad that they finally rescued it. For everyone else, there was a dog that was out on the street and um, just hadn't been around people for a long time, and there was sort of a, an ongoing story of a woman who was trying to coax this dog into coming in to uh, um, be with humans. So anyway, they caught him, and they have him at a shelter, and they cleaned him all up, and I think he's doing better adjusting to people. If dogs could talk, I wonder where he's been, huh? Wanda, welcome. She says, happy Friday. Well, happy Friday to you, too. I hope you're working on something or having fun while you're watching. That's wonderful. Did I say hello to Jacqueline? Welcome. All right, let's do a little more. Oh, oh wait, I had a text here. Oh, Lucille, you are on. I'm so glad. Lucille says she loved the walk, too, and she enjoyed her salad. That's great. Great. I wish I could say I ate all the kale I picked. I did not. I had soup, and I'm trying to think. I had that tomato up in the garden. Does that count? I need more greens. Oh, I'm so glad. So let's keep going. And actually, so I have so many things to bring you up to date on, but if Lucille, now that Lucille is on, I can share with you a little bit about what she's doing in the next coming weeks. And um, just, it's, it's very interesting. Lucille is, she lives down in the Dominican Republic, and she is working as a missionary there, has been for years, right? and has started schools and has she and her daughter have an orphans and widows program feeding program and they've just done wonderful mm -hmm. things down there oh Karen says hmm my Google Plus app isn't cooperating on the iPad is anyone else having trouble with the iPad app you look better on the big screen anyway. Oh, no, don't you dare. It's hot. It works like a charm on the PC. Good to see you, and hi to everyone. Hi, Karen. Thanks for letting us know about the Google Plus app. I haven't had good luck with that lately either. Okay, Unit B. So we have Unit A and Unit B. We're starting to make a block. So let me go on to C, and then I'll keep telling you about Lucille. So Lucille is a missionary down in Dominican. She's heading back with a suitcase full of all sorts of things, pans and things that, that are needed, and also yarn. Remember a few weeks ago we had a yard sale and I talked about the um, uh, Widows and Orphans um, ministry. They, they had this big just barrels of yarn and I had some that I traded some things for and just all day long we just played in the yarn. Well she's taking the remnants of that, which were a lot, down for the children to play with. And they of course, it's a treat for them. When you're worried about running water and clean clothes and food, it's quite the luxury just to even see the color of yarn or as Lucille was telling me on her walk today literally one of the most creative things that these children can experience right now is picking out a crayon in a box of crayons but imagine the joy that gives them it's those little things so the reason I mention all that is it, in addition to the yarn, she is going to need some needles. So I am going to an estate sale tomorrow. The things we do, right? That is in its second weekend, right around the corner, and there was a pile of knitting needles that 
You'll be proud of me. I did not get last weekend because I had no need. But now that we have the need down in the Dominican, I will be there with bells on, Lucille, and I will get you some knitting needles. Last week, I know Tammy was on telling us about teaching the children her, her kids quilting. I'm interested if anyone else is doing any kids teaching or um, spreading, spreading sewing. Okay, so see how big I'm making it? I'm finding that's much easier because then I can cut it down at the end. Hi to Carol and Deb if you're out there. Isn't it going to be fun to go to Tim's graduation party tomorrow? Hopefully, well they have a tent we've heard. So as everyone I think knows, Tim is my nephew, our nephew, and he is having a college graduation party tomorrow. And it's supposed to rain, but they have a tent, I said that. And guess whose quilt is done? Yep, I finished it. Of course, this is kind of funny and a reminder to everyone. Remember I was saying I was going to put a label on the back and that there was this perfect picture of Tim with his mother and father and brother in front of some Clemson school sign. And he was in his cap and gown. It was just perfect. And in my mind, for months, I have taken that picture, copied it, printed it on fabric, and put it on this label. Well, Tim is looking for a job. And I suspect that's part of the reason why he's taken down his Facebook page. So do you think I can find that picture anywhere? No. And of course, his mother is busy planning this party with people who are coming up from all over the up and down the East Coast and the last thing she needs to be doing is looking for a photo for me but I did send her an email anyway but she hasn't replied so I went to I didn't use a picture I just used a little piece of the fabric and I made a label it, it'll do but isn't that funny I I had it in my mind, that's what we would do. And that's a case of taking technology really for granted. I'm just becoming so used to having things available when I think I need them. I mean, it's, you know, and I promise I am so quilting while I'm doing this. Ten years ago, when the digital revolution that we are most definitely within started, I remember thinking and, of course, saying and sharing that I thought we were going to go through a period of time as we switched over to digital cameras where we were going to lose a lot of history in pictures. And I think that is the case. I think we're finding that... I mean, I know I have a gap in my photos from when we switched over from the Kodak going down to the, the local store to get actual physical prints to the digital. Anyway, so that's an issue, but I think we all now are... Now, of course, we have this issue probably with multiple copies of the same picture in a hundred gazillion places, and, you know, lots of people other than us know more about us than we do. That's scary, but that's another topic. What I think the big issue is now is this instant access to everything is causing at least me to just go at too fast a pace. It's almost like, well, if I get that, then I'll... You know, you, when you're doing something, you do task A, then you do task B, right? We've all learned that if you just keep going, you get it done. Well, now with all of this digital technology, those tasks take a lot less time. Nothing we don't already know, but, but 
somehow it doesn't seem very healthy to just speed ourselves up and do five times the tasks. There's got to be a, a more innovative approach to life. Otherwise, we're just robots with in human flesh. I mean, I know that's that's a pretty exaggerated, and clearly I've hit middle age, and so I'm doing a lot of that thinking, but that's my latest thought. So the moral of the story is Slow down. Don't take all of this instant access for granted and don't become a slave to it. Put it down. Take walks. Go listen to birds. And I think that's what's cool. I've seen in the quilting community there is there's a good balance. People do do take the time. Okay, so now I have, maybe you can see it right there. I'm thinking A, B, C, D, E is just a little piece of white. That literally doesn't have any piecing, but it's going to be the center, so I'm just literally following the lines of this piece of paper. I don't know if you can see that, but I've literally... That is the middle. Yeah. There we go. Like a puzzle. Okay, so I'm going to sew unit A and B together. Yikes! And if we do this right, the corners will match up. If I did this by hand. No, no, I'm gonna keep trying it via machine, guys. Guys, you're not guys. This really should be done by hand though. other one while we're at it. Let's not get crazy. Okay, so A, B, and C and D are sewn together. And I can't web them because we have a piece in the middle. Okay. There's that. Okay, so far so good, and there's that. Now if we put... Ha-ha, it's going to work. That together. And I'm going to put this piece of paper on top so that it gives me my sewing line. Whew. 
So how's everyone doing out there? I hope that you've had a good Friday and a good week. See, so we have that bottom sewn. Now I'm going to sew this other piece. Dear Jane definitely has to be a pattern for the slow sewing movement. Because if you're in a rush, it just its not going to give you a good result. So if anyone's on Facebook and you want to see more of these, Dear Jane Blocks, do a search. In some of the groups, I noticed there was a group over in the UK that might be fun to watch. Um, okay, so there is the middle of B6 Wild Goose Chase. We are making progress. <laughs> Okay, A, B, C, D, E. Now I'm looking for F. There's J. I think I'm looking for F. <laughs> oh. K, G, J. Oh, this is interesting. It's like one piece. Hmm. Who we'll just be buzzed? Oh, Joyce L. Hi. Joyce, I loved your Merry Mayhem quilt. I thought even though you had that very dark color in the squares, it was striking. That was great. And I loved your the floral that you had in the the um, patches that are going sideways. So Joyce says, hi, just watching tonight, worked today, then did the grocery shopping and dinner. I know what you mean. Let me see. Oh, Sarah Kokonowski, I'm so glad you tuned in. Thank you. She says, I'm working on another miniature block for the Japanese taupe bomb block of the month. This one is small log cabin blocks. Oh. You have to tell us where we can learn more about this. So are you getting a kit every week? I mean every every month? That is just stunning. I'm so glad you're with us and I'd love to learn more. Oh, that's wonderful. Speaking of kits, guess what came in the mail today? Huh. Yep, another Hitty doll quilt kit. And this you're going to crack up. It made me laugh. So Hitty, the doll that I've been making, is a pocket, a, yeah, a hand, a pocket doll. She's six and a half inches tall. This is a kit to make Hitty her own doll. I don't know if you can see that. And her doll needs a bed and a quilt. So I think the finished doll... It's going to be like an inch and a half tall. And Sarah, I have seen yours, and it, it maybe it's two inches tall. Up oh, two inches, jointed, jointed wooden doll with her own painted rope bed, quilt, and wooden oh, pouting chair. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> so, again, another kit really well done by Gail Wilson. And I'm looking forward to that. Maybe I'll do that on vacation. But I thought... Yes, my hitty kits are backing up a little bit. Okay.
am not getting this. Okay, yes I am. Sorry about that. Now we have to make four of these, just little triangles. So let's just do that. I hope I can finish this. Last week you guys let me just jabber on and I went five minutes overtime. I had fun. And, by the way, the picnic quilt is done. So get ready for a picnic. Again, I am trying not to worry about wasting fabric. And you know what? I could even chain piece these. So I'm going to put four of these together. This white has some painting on one side, so I have to make sure to always get the right side. Four. Oh, I should have my IKEA light on. Another thing that I have learned from Bonnie. Look at that. Isn't that good? So I have this. Oops. To make sure. Yikes. With any luck, I have just made four triangles that just need to be pressed and then cut. So here, pressing them. Okay, so see I have four of these, right? And on the back is my printed pattern. And so literally, There is one of the pieces that will go right like that. So might as you I'll do all of them. Can you believe it's August and I'm proud of us. We're getting things done. We're working on our UFOs. 
But is anyone else thinking about what the fall is going to bring and what new projects we can dig into? There's a second one. The Merry Mayhem, I think, was a good success. I did more machine quilting, and I'll show that to you. Well, they don't want to show it to you until after holiday, because it's a surprise for some of you on the telephone. But needless to say, I quilted. I did a lot of heavy quilting, and I learned a lot that freeform machine quilting is not as easy as you might think at all. But you guys knew that. All right, can't think about this too much. It's just a block. Sarah, on your Japanese block of the month, is it all handwork? We're interested to know that. There's one. Let's put the other one on. So at this college graduation party tomorrow, there's supposedly a dunk tank. Isn't that cool? It's coming out. And one of the brothers, ooh, but it's a little off. Surprise, surprise. Huh. We're just going to keep going. Maybe it'll just be a little askew. There's that. And again, the beauty of this paper piecing, like Karen taught us, is on the back, with these pattern pieces, you know exactly where to sew. You can sew right on that line. Oops, my light turned off. So you can see the next iteration. How are we doing? Okay. We might make it. Cut these all off. Okay. So that's what we have so far. And just as a reminder, we're making that one. So we have another couple of rounds to go. Actually, just one round and then white around it. So we can do this. So we've got the white, 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 and white. Let's clear off our whole table. Here's some white we can use. There's that. 
And now we have four triangles left. Ooh, these are going to take a lot, of, a lot of pieces. There are four pieces for each triangle. So and the middle piece is blue. So I'm literally going to cut four blues. I dropped it. And let's see. Let's iron this. Okay, so we have the middle four blues. Now, same drill. Actually, I'm going to get a lot of whites ready. So that maybe, I think I'm going to try and chain piece this too. So I'll do, those are the number ones. I'll do all number twos, then number threes, then number fours. And again, I am using a lot of fabric here. Okay, so I put the right side here for one, and then there's two. Can anyone hear that pounding? This is so funny, and this is what a great, great man I am married to. Bob is downstairs pounding chicken breast to make chicken cordon bleu. <laughs> chicken breast was on sale at the supermarket, so of course I got that. And that is what he is doing. How lucky am I? But he's very supportive of this little hobby I've got. In fact, if the truth be told, there have been a few Fridays, not many, because I really, really, really do like this. Who wouldn't? Um, there have been a few Fridays, though, when I have said to Bob, I think I'm not going to do Fibercast. And he marches me right up here and he says, you're going to do Fibercast. And I'm so glad he has done that. All right, so we just put one to two, and I am cutting it back. Trimming it up is a better word for it, right? I hope you can tell what I'm doing. See, I'm just see how there's an extra there. I'm just trimming it up so that now I can iron back piece two from piece one. And yeah, we're going to be able to do this. I think. I think. I think. I know we're running up against the hour. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. We've still got about five minutes, but. I just want to respect your time and not go over again. So that's what it looks like. And I don't know if you can see on the back, but there's one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to put on number three. And again, paper piecing is working backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a text. See. Oops. Mm 
Okay. Well, we have a few of you who have joined. Oh, sweet Woodruffs. Hi. I'm so glad you joined. She says, hey, Lynn, I found out I'm going to be a first-time grandma. Oh, that's wonderful. The baby is due in March, so I'm sewing all promised quilts and UFOs as fast as I can. I've made three baby quilts, one doll quilt, and pieced lots of backings in two weeks. Keep me motivated. I'm determined to get as much done as I can. When the baby gets here, I'll only want to sew for it. Thanks for being my sewing buddy, she says. Can't wait to start my own Dear Jane. Oh, that is wonderful. Love, Michael? And I know you've even told us how to say your name. Oh, sweet Woodruffs. That is great. Congratulations. That is exciting. And I am loving your quilts that you're making. Those Love your color combinations and everything. Rita, welcome. Just tuned in to my Fibercast. Love to do I would love to do a Dear Jane quilt too. You definitely should. With your color sense, you could add some gray in. That would be really fun. Joyce says, so back to Joyce, she says she's watching, which I said and she worked and she went grocery shopping. Uh, thanks for Fibercast. I always love watching. Thank you, Joyce. I'm glad to know that. Sandra, and I'll, I'll read this, and then I promise I'll get right back to my square. She says, Sandra, Sandra says, Lynn, do you find it easier to put that together in pieces or with block all one piece? You know... So if I understand the question, Sandra is asking, what we've been doing tonight is I've been paper piecing pieces and then I've been putting them together. Another way would be to have one block with one piece of paper with all of them and would it work if I had just one big piece? Because I think I would like that better. I really do because then you'd have you'd know that the back pieces match right. Sandra, I think you have just pointed something out. I think we could be doing this an even better way. So that's my answer. Yes, I think I would like to do it all in one piece. But since we're this far, let's keep going on this. And between now and next week, I'll try and find a full block paper piece. Thank you. That is a great question. And that's a perfect example. When you start to dig into this, Dear Jane, you'll find there are many different methods. And um, Okay, we're getting there. I think maybe I'll have time to finish these and show you one on this. And then I think I'm going to have to post a picture of it. Oh, I don't need that much, do I? There must be a way in the software that I can get it to print out all in one piece. <laughs> okay. So again, we've got four little paper pieces that Pull the paper away, trim it up. I think I'll do one. I'll finish this one. Okay, so here I have so far three of the pieces. Now I'm going to put on the fourth piece. I'm going to hold those. 
the fourth white piece. And then we'll sew it to the big piece and then we'll call call our dear Jane work done for tonight. Oh, and be thinking about what you want to do this fall. You know, I, I certainly love to work on whatever's here in the studio, but if there are certain things that you want to do, to see, I think we've got someone who's going to make show us how to make scarves coming in. Susan Tata. That is Susan Tata. Um, definitely I'm doing the Bonnie Hunter mystery. But that doesn't start until November. Okay. So now we have four pieces sewn together and now I'm going to cut out the block. <laughs> Sandra, I'm so glad you said something. I wonder why I have it all broken up like this. Okay, so as our last step for tonight we have this and then yeah, we're going to put, put it on there. And there we go. And I'll put on the other four blocks, or three blocks, and then I'll, I'll put white around it. And we will be done with B6, the Wild Goose Chase. Another Dear Jane block. So if I've tempted you, take a look. Google some of the sites. Get thinking about your own Dear Jane. Uh, thank you for joining me on this summer night. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful next week. Keep sewing. Keep working. And we'll see you next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fibercast. Bye, everyone.